Hey everyone, so I got a technique for you for carving out nice round holes in your polygonal geometry. And this is handy if you're um, sewer holes in the uh, in a street, which is one of the things we're gonna, we were going to do this past week. We'll probably do it this week coming up. So uh, I just wanted to show you this technique. Um, so there are several different ways to do that. Right now I'm just going to show you how to do it based on centering your hole on a vertice. So, um, it, it, assuming this is a street for a second, let's say we we're going to put our sewer hole or sewer cap right here. So I'm going to select this vertice and I'm going to go into shift right click and what I'm looking for is chamfer. There's not a lot of options in chamfer, so we'll take a look at it. Um, it's got a width and whether to remove the face in the middle afterwards. And uh, you can leave that off for now, that's fine. And if we hit apply and take a look at what happens, it basically just divides your vertice um, into, in this case, four more vertices. If you're doing a corner and a cube or something, it might divide it into three. But in our case, uh, this is exactly what we want. Um, so um, the only downside to it right now is um, we've created these end gons on the side. So if you go into face mode, you look at these um, four end gons that have been created, and they have more than five, four sides, which is a no-no in our modeling world. Um, so what we need to do is we need to quadrify these again before we do much more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back out to object mode. I'm going to go shift right click. I'm going to use the split tool, the interactive split or the split poly, whichever you prefer. Um, for this particular task, interactive split works fine. And what we're able to do is you can see as I'm moving this around, um, it's got like a little magnetic snap capability. So it's going to snap from the sides of these polygons. So we're just going to snap there to there, then I'm going to right click to end that one, there to there, and right click to end that, there to there to right click, and there to there, and then right click to end that, and then I'm going to hit Q to end the tool. So now I've got back to four quads, but as you probably observed, this does not look much like a circle at this point. Well, it will in a few minutes. Basically what we're going to want to do, is we're going to go back into vertex mode, and grab those four vertex that we just started with or that we just created, I'm going to hit scale for a second and pull them out like that. You can see where it starts to build an eight-sided, um, what's going to be a hole as soon as we get rid of the face. So if I just do that now, boop, and get rid of the face. Um, that's kind of eyeballed. I didn't actually do a very exacting job on that, and actually I'm going to show you how it is off a little bit. Uh, the best way to make sure that you've got an absolutely perfect hole, or a, a perfect um, eight-sided uh, the opening here is to use some other geometry. So in my case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click. Yeah, I'm going to right click and create a polygonal cylinder. Make sure you're using polygons or po polygonal um, primitives when you're doing this stuff. Alrighty. So, um, so uh, it's a good starting place for uh, any of this type of work. Uh, but I don't need all of it. Actually, I only need the faces on one side. So in this case, I'm just going to right click, go to faces, grab all of these faces, and delete them. Alrighty. So I want to do one thing first before I do that. I am going to go into back to object mode and turn on subdivision caps and just give it one subdivision on the top. I'll show you why in a minute. Then go back to faces mode and delete all of that. Now go to object mode, select this. You can see that the pivot is where the original center was. So I'm just going to tap my center pivot tool, bring it there. What I'm going to do then is mouse over it with W selected, hold down vertex snap, and I'm going to snap it to the surface. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment too. I'm going to uh, hold down the shift bar and go into the top view. And right now that's a little hard to look at. So what I'm going to do is turn on shaded on wireframe, which is this icon right up here. And it just gives me the ability to see um, exactly what I'm looking at. So get this, there you go. How about that? I'm gonna hold down V and just pull this along like that. There, perfect. And it's pretty darn close actually. If you look at it, we'll frame this thing up. Um, but the vertices that I pulled out, they're just not quite exactly where they need to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into vertex mode. I'm going to grab those edge vertices that aren't quite even, and I'm just going to pop them to the edge of that cylinder top. 
look at this. This will give me a perfect eight-sided hole that matches up. So we go these and snap, these and snap. And um, this could have been smaller or bigger depending on your need. Right now it just happens to be the exact size that I need. Um, I'm also going to use that after the fact. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take it and move it up there so I'm not looking at it. Okay, so let's take a look at this guy for a second. So now I've got quads and it's perfectly round. So uh, if I hit the this button, we can see that we get this really nice rounded um, circle in our geometry. And in this case, what I'd like to do is, back to one for a second, go into edge mode, and I'm going to extrude it down as if I needed a little bit of a sewer hole or something. So I'm going to go extrude edge, and I'll just put a little support edge in like that. I'm going to hit G to repeat the tool, and extrude down again like that, and then hit G again. I'm going to tap this and bring that down just a little bit and potentially bring it in just like that. Now the only thing left I need to do is while it's still in edge mode I'm going to hold down shift right click and I'm going to come down here and fill the hole. Alrighty. All I really got left to do is I just got to quadrify this. So we will go into object mode, hold down shift, go to split, interactive split will work great. And I'm just going to do this and Q to get out of the tool. And now I have a nice hole. If we look at this, so like that, you can see what we end up with is a nice hole. Now we can make that edge sharper if you want, but this will do just fine for now. As a matter of fact, on the street, you might get a little bit around it. Now what I want to do is I'm going to build the sewer cap. So what I'm going to do is go into isolation for a second, grab this. Say W, and yeah, bring it down a bit just so I can work on it. Okay, so uh, you've noticed, remember when I cut this thing um, before, but I came back to make sure I wanted to add this internal uh, cut. Not that I did it manually, but the reason why is for this purpose. Um, if I didn't have that cut there and I went to the insert edge loop, it would kind of, uh, it wouldn't work. It would, well, I'll show you what it does. If I add the insert edge loop here now, sort of like a sewer cap, that part that is raised, I can click there and add that. This would be as if I just had these big triangles. So if I add it in here, insert edge loop doesn't work on triangles. So that's why I wanted this internal, so I could have quads here and cut them. So that's exactly what I wanted. And I could have removed and I will remove the uh, every other face in here, but for now, I just wanted to show you that. So sometimes when you're doing, especially an internal cut, if you're trying to use your insert edge loop tool and it doesn't work, uh, the reason it won't work is because um, you, it needs quads to be able to insert an edge loop like that, though you could do it manually. Alrighty. So what I got now is I'm going to go into face mode and I'm going to select one of the faces, shift select the other one. And uh, well, actually let's do the whole thing at once first. Let's grab this whole thing and go extrude face and I'm going to pull this up just to get a bit of thickness to it as a matter of fact let's just do yeah let's just do that click off then I'm going to grab these here I'm going to hit G and then I'm going to actually I'm going to add the loops this way I'm just going to pull it up just a little bit tap G bring it up a bit more tap G again and bring it up just a little bit more. You can see what it's doing is it's actually adding in the edge loops with those um, extrudes like that. You could do it manually after the fact, but since we were there anyway, I figured it would be easier to do it that way. All right, so now we've got that. We just need to add a couple more edge loops to this just to make it nice and crisp. So I'm going to go back into edge loop mode. I'm going to say, give me an edge loop right in here. Give me an edge loop right out here. That should do the job. And maybe one down here on the bottom. All right. So let's take a look at that. Go to object mode. And if I hit smooth on this, we get a nice crunchy, what could be the beginnings of your sewer cap. Now you might want to cut a hole in the middle or do something like that, but we already talked about how to cut a hole in the middle. That's not hard to do. Uh, you might just do it with a texture map. Anyway. 
since this was the quad that we used as a guide for that hole, this should slide down nicely, and it does frame it up right into that hole. So we can put this in here and recess it just a little bit. Nice thing about that is when I grab the tool and we hit that, we get that nice sewer cap sort of a feel. You might even want to put it down a little bit more so if you're riding a bicycle over it, you wouldn't get plugged. But basically, as far as um, how I would do a um, sewer cap on the street, and you might want to make that an entire tunnel, if not, something like that would be enough just so it was closed for light leak if you were lighting your scene. That might be enough for um, your sewer detail. All right, all right. Hopefully that was uh, helpful.